The Central Florida Christian Chamber and Triangle Media welcome you to the Builders Podcast, spotlighting Christian business leaders and their stories of faith, leadership, and success. Here's your host, Suzanne Lynn. Welcome to the Builders Podcast. I'm Suzanne Lynn with Crystal Parker, our new president, I can say for the very first time, took a uh, took her seat in the beginning of July. So we're glad that Crystal's um, going to be joining us. And Peter Lowe, uh, we're going to be talking to Peter about moving from business and moving scripture into the business world and what Jesus had to say about business. Um, we're just glad that you're here. He's going to be speaking July the 9th. Let's just jump in with Peter and Crystal. Hello. Hi. <laughs> well, hello, Suzanne and Crystal. Boy, what a joy to be here with you. It's wonderful to have you join us. I know that Crystal's a big fan. She's been telling me a lot about you. So uh, I'm looking forward to hearing about your ministry. Will you share with us? Tell us about uh, what the ministry is and uh, where it started. I know that you've been in hundreds of countries sharing this. <laughs> well, first of all, it's a joy to be here with Crystal. And I'm a big fan of Crystal. I mean, Crystal's energy, enthusiasm, dedication is just such a joy of every time I talk with her. So it's an honor to be here on this podcast, too. <laughs> and uh, I'm actually a missionary kid and a pastor's kid. I was born in Pakistan and I grew up in India. So really from a very early age, I became very interested in spiritual things because when I grew up in India, I saw every major religion of the world firsthand lived before my eyes with the exception of Judaism. And there weren't really Jews there that I knew, but every other religion, Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, Shinduists, Sikhs, and so on, you, you just, um, you, know, you know, they were there. And, and I started to see what is it that causes people to really experience uh, the, the spirit of God, the supernatural, because there's an enormous difference between religion and relationship when it comes to our connection with God. And, you know, so often in business, we try and actually have kind of a religious approach. It's like, here, here's five principles of wisdom, um, or here's, you know, 10, you know, good principles. And, and those are great. There's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's definitely way better to be wise than to be a fool. But the exciting thing about Christianity is that it involves a relationship with a God who, who reveals to us uh, the future, who reveals to us the way in which we should go. And, and that, I've discovered, changes everything in business and career and in life. Wow. Well, Peter, uh, what an interesting perspective, because I think that in the workforce, especially when I was leading large groups in the workforce, there was a lot of differences between religion and beliefs. You had some believers and non-believers. And from your perspective and your experience as a leader in a business, how do you bring all that together to have, you know, one vision amid among all of the diversity? <laughs> Well, first of all, you know, we've all heard, or most of us, any have heard of the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. It says, against such things, there's no law. And I've discovered, regardless of what people's religion is, regardless whether they have no religion at all, there's no law against the fruit of the Spirit in the workplace. <laughs> if you walk in love and in joy and in peace and self-control and all of these things, people are going to gravitate towards that. So you know, that's just kind of a basic foundation. Mm -hmm. and, and then the second thing I think is to me, the supernatural uh, goes far beyond that uh, when we really have a relationship with the Lord. But I found in in America, in business, and really in society, there's an enormous difference between imposing your faith and exposing your faith. Mm -hmm. And when we impose our faith, we get a lot of pushback. When we say, you know, you know, you know, this is what God says, or this is how it should be, um, you know, people don't agree with us. We're just going to get a lot of pushback. Uh, however, if you have the viewpoint of exposing your faith and saying, here's something that's worked for me. Here's how I experienced it in life. And, and, you know, if you're interested, I'm glad to share it with you. You know, there's a wide open door in America. If you have the van, if you have the viewpoint or the mentality of exposing rather than imposing. Hmm. I, I love wow. to tell uh, parents and leaders more is caught than taught. 
And I mm -hmm. think that's exactly what I heard you say there. Suzanne, that is so good. I just really hope the audience caught that. Yeah, that's pretty profound because I know that the workplace is an extra touchy area. I mean, you can kind of you have a lot more grace when it comes to family. Oh, you know, I kind of messed up. You can get penalized and fired for saying or doing the wrong thing. And as believers, it's our duty we're called to share. And sometimes it's a fine line, but you make it sound so easy, Peter. <laughs> well, you know, part of it is Jesus is our example. And I always find it fascinating how Jesus was criticized constantly for being friends with the prostitutes and the drunks. You know, it doesn't say the ex-prostitutes and ex-drunks. You know, that would be easy for us to deal with. But, you know, however Jesus dealt with the issues of prostitution and drunkenness, he did it in a way where those people still wanted to be with him. They wanted to hang out with him. And I find that, you know, there's a religious mentality we can have that makes people not want to hang out with us. And to me, that is not the Jesus way. You know, the Bible says that Jesus had more joy than anyone else in the world. So Hebrews 1, 9, God has anointed you, pouring out the oil of joy in you more than on anyone else. So Jesus had this amazing joy, you know, one of the fruit of the spirit. And, and people want to hang out with those who are joyful, not those who are judgmental. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, having a Christian foundation for a business or career, that's just, uh, that's a good, healthy place to start. I mean, there, for us to assume that everyone who's watching this um, for the Christian Chamber are well on their way in business. I mean, COVID has changed a lot. A lot of people pivoting, restarting, and, uh, you know, they're bringing new team members in. But having that foundation of Christ no matter where you're at in your walk with your career or business is a great thing, right? Well, you know, I'd say like there's two ways that I think of it. One is, you know, in Hebrews 6, 19, it says, we have this hope as an anchor for our soul, firm and true. And, you know, we have this anchor. We have this foundation in Jesus Christ that no matter how bad things go, I mean, you know, first of all, you know, what's the worst that can happen to us is we die and go to heaven. I mean, it's really, you know, it's, right. you know our worst case scenario is not very bad at all. Right. So, you know, we can have joy. You know, so there is this foundation that really helps us tremendously. But the other thing is I think of how God desires to establish relationship with us and bring the supernatural into our business and work experience. So as an example, uh, when I was a teenager, um, I moved to Toronto. Canada from India. And my neighbor there had a little two-seater airplane. And every once in a while, he'd take me up in it. And one day we were flying one Sunday afternoon north of Toronto, and we were following this two-lane highway for navigation. Well, on this two-lane highway, there were two cars in it. One was following the other, and it would kept pulling out to pass. But then they'd come to a hill. He couldn't see over. He'd have to pull back. They'd go over the hill. He'd pull out to pass again. But it, then there was a curb. He couldn't quite see around. He'd have to pull back. Well, this went on several times. Now, from up in the plain, we could see that the highway was deserted for miles ahead. And if we'd have had a two-way radio, we could have just radioed down to him, go ahead and pass this completely safe. <laughs> and in the same way, when we try and run our businesses and our careers and our lives, just looking from our vantage point, we can't see the opportunities for success ahead. We can't always see the pitfalls and the dangers ahead, but God can. And when we establish a relationship with God and, and, and we move beyond religion into relationship, you know, and Isaiah says, well, hear a voice behind us saying, this is the way, walk in it. And and we see this over and over again. So like, you know, you know, the person I'm named after, Peter in the Bible, you know, the very first thing Jesus did for Peter before he even called him, as a disciple was to give him a supernatural business miracle. Mm -hmm. Peter had been out fishing all night long, hadn't caught anything. You know, we've all had that experience of business. We've made sales calls all day, nothing. Negotiation, we thought we had the deal, it fell apart. You know, Peter had to be discouraged, certainly exhausted. But Jesus said to him, I have a supernatural business miracle for you. If you'll, I know you're tired, I know you want to rest, but if you're willing to get back in your business, get back in your boat, and this time you sail all the way to the deep end, it's going to be more work. But this time when you put out your nets, you're going to catch so many fish that you're going to be outside of your comfort zone because you're going to feel like your boat is sinking. <laughs> and you're going to panic. 
But in it, you're going to see this supernatural business miracle where you're going to catch so many fish. And, you know, it's interesting to me. This is what Jesus did with Peter is he led him into the supernatural in business. And you see, the reason why I call it supernatural is, you know, we don't see, for instance, that, you know, fish fell down out of heaven into Peter's boat. And people say, oh, wow, that happened. That would really be supernatural. <laughs> well, actually, that would not be supernatural. That would be anti-natural. <laughs> and instead, what we see is Peter conducted business like usual, his standard operating procedures to get in the boat, sail out on the water, put the nets out just like he normally would. And the only thing that made it supernatural were the results, the bottom line results. And this is one reason why I love having God as my senior business partner, because I want my business partner to care about the bottom line. They've got to care about results. And the thing we see with Jesus is he's saying, look, I'm a business person. I've been in business, you know, maybe 15 years before I'm starting in ministry here publicly. You know, I get this stuff. You got to make the bottom line work. And this is what's so exciting about having this kind of supernatural relationship with me. Okay, I have to just let, I just got to let all that wash over me for a moment and just breathe that in. First of all, the visualization of being in that plane, looking down on the cars. Okay, I, I'm from Moscow, Kansas, population 300. There's two lane roads everywhere. And to think and imagine that the roads are clear, but I can't tell that. And I just, I have seen that in my career over and over again. When I try and try and try so hard to push something through or to make something work, God just says, let me, I've got this. Is that what you're talking about with that supernatural and just tapping into that? It, it is. I mean, it's um, absolutely um, amazing how, you know, a lot of us you know, in fact, many of us as Christian business people, you know, we've kind of tried to walk with God in business, but we've never really connected with God in such a way where we really expect him to direct our paths in business. You know, we, we know he's there somewhere, but we really just don't call on him. Right. We're like, yeah. I don't want to bother him. He's 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 back in the back of the plane somewhere. And it's like, yeah, exactly. You know, and it, it's like, you know, boy, you know, if I used to ask God to direct, you know, that'd be kind of like cheating, right? You know, where if we get to the supernatural edge, uh, you know, um, because they want me to just struggle this? along with everyone else. <laughs> what about the time when you just have so much angst or, it, or, or you've got so much on your mind, you sit down to pray and then I don't know, three seconds later, you're off on a rabbit trail somewhere. Like, how do you tap into this, you know, this Holy Spirit, the superpower, the supernatural? How would you, I mean, there's so many people, I think, that are on their journey, maybe in a different place with their their walk with the Lord. And they may not really know, they, they may not have a, a process that works for them. How do you do it? Like, what what exactly is your ability or your way? Or do you have meditation? Do you read the Bible? What are some things that works for you, Peter? You know, it's such a great question. And, um, you know, first of all, you know, this is like anything. Um, you've got to learn this. There's going to be difficulties along the way. You know, I mean, you know, it doesn't just, you know, it's not, you know, the fish don't just fall out of heaven. Oh, that was easy, right? It's hard work. You know, that's why I said, like, Peter had to engage in hard work to haul in that supernatural business miracle. And, you know, Jesus said that when you pray, you're going to face difficulty. You're going to get discouraged. It's not going to work quite the way you expect. This, you know, people say, where did he say that? Well, as an example, in, in Luke 18, 1, he said he told them a parable to show that when they pray, they needed to always persevere and not give up. Well, what's perseverance? It's keeping going when things don't seem to be going right. <laughs> so you see, like when you pray. It's not going to seem to go right. And I'll tell you, I meet so many Christians who really don't have any kind of vibrant prayer life because it was difficult. And they figure, well, I don't know how to pray or God's not answering. And they give up because they don't think it should be difficult. They think, well, you know, I should just pray and there's the answer or, or whatever. And it, it just honestly, in my experience, isn't that way. You, you've got to 
persevere. You've got to enter in. And partly the reason why I'm sharing these stories is to kind of give people a vision to say, you know, if you'll pursue God with all your heart and you don't quit, you will not be disappointed. <laughs> I mean, he is going to come through, but it's not just always handed to you on a silver platter. You know, you see, you know, the Bible, back then we've all heard, you know, knock and the, you know, asking it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. And the Greek, it actually says, keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on, 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 on searching. Like, you know, why would it say keep on doing it if it worked the first time every time? <laughs> no, you gotta keep at it. So That's the reason point. why I say that is to me, for me personally, the best part of my day is what I call my spiritual happy hour. And that is I just go and have a good time with the Lord. <laughs> I'm having a spiritual happy hour right now. <laughs> We can do this for the full hour, a spiritual happy hour. That is it right wow. there. Well, well, it is, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's you know, it's, it's like my girlfriend, you know, when she calls me up on the phone, I don't have to say, you know, Justine, is that you, you know, I know it's her, I recognize her voice, but it's the same thing with the mm -hmm. Lord. You know, if you, you know, if you wait to try and hear the Lord's voice when you're, you're in the middle of some massive business problem, that's not the time to really learn to hear. <laughs> you want to hear when you're alone, when you're undistracted, when you're, you're not feeling so pressured. <laughs> Why is it normally that we are uh, with bloody knees when we're like, okay, God, I've tried everything. The, the, my last hope is prayer. Like that should be the first thing that we go to. Oh, I know. It's crazy, isn't it? And in fact, you know, it's an there's an interesting verse in Zephaniah 1, verse 12, where God says, I will destroy my people who no longer ask for my guidance or seek my blessing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I used to think, oh, you know, I really should, you know, I should only kind of ask for God's guidance or his blessing, you know, when the times get really tough, when I can't figure it out myself. <laughs> but no, actually, it's the other way around. He wants us <laughs> to have this kind of relationship with them. You know, you know, you know, it says in Amos, how can two walk together unless they be agreed? Well, you know, for us to walk with God, we've got to learn to agree with God. But how do we agree if we don't even know what he's thinking or what he's directing? Mm -hmm. And uh, wow. Well, it's like and, when I get uh, a new pair of high heel shoes, I like to I like to take the bottom of the sole and and kind of scruff it up. The other way, it's too slippery. So I, I have to ask, and then it it becomes the best pair of shoes I own. So, how has your walk? How have some of the difficulties that you've experienced in life, or has it just been all ro roses and perfection for you? And then that's why you're here to tell us about this today. How, how oh, it's been really all roses, which is mostly thorns in my experience. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, you know, I'd say I am like, I, I kind of feel like, you know, probably my parents named me after Peter in the Bible because they kind of knew, um, you know, what I was in for in life. You know, you know, I, you know, I say, you know, my life has been a life. Um, you know, where I set some dreams on my life that ended up making me absurdly happy, completely fearless and put me in constant trouble. <laughs> and, and it's like Peter was in constant trouble. So, you know, Peter walked on water, but he also sank. And I feel the same way. You know, I feel there's been times in business where this has all flowed in an incredible way. And, um, you know, it's been like walking on water. It's just been so supernatural. Other times where, um, you know, I've sunk over and over again, sometimes because of my own stupidity and sinfulness, sometimes because of circumstance, sometimes because of others, probably sometimes because of the evil one coming to attack me. But, you know, you know, all these different various things. And uh, but, you know, I'd much rather, you know, you know, when, you know, when, when you know, Pete or, or Jesus said to Peter when he rescued him out of the water, he said, you have little faith. And most of us take that as a rebuke, but I take it as a compliment because all the people who stayed in the boat had no faith. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'd much rather be like Peter walking on water some of the time, sinking some of the time, being rescued by Jesus all the time mm -hmm. and having him say to me, oh, you know, Peter, you have little faith. You know, that's that's where I want to be. <laughs> wow, that's a great way to say it. Peter, I, I know, Crystal, and I could, we could go easily all afternoon and talk to you about this, but what do you want people to walk away from the uh, relationship building lunch uh, on July the 9th? I want to just double check my date. What do you hope that they walk away with learning, feeling, experiencing, remembering? Uh, you know, and it's such a great thing. I think, you know, more than anything is to have a new sense 
of God and what he can do and desires to do in their businesses and careers. You know, in um, 2 Peter 3.18, it says, grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, that word knowledge in the Greek is actually the word experiential knowledge. God wants us to have experiential knowledge of and not just to, 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 to know the Bible per se, which is obviously great, but it's to have that experience. And to be able to go out and have the experience where you can go out and, and, and know that God is directing your paths, even when all the circumstances seem to be going wrong. In, in Hebrews 11, 8, it says, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he didn't know where he was going. So Abraham really couldn't be goal directed. You know, how do you make a goal? I, I've got a goal that I don't know where I'm going. You know, that's not really a, a great goal. <laughs> but instead, Abraham chose to be God directed and he obeyed God and he went out and you know became one of the richest people, if not the richest person in all of human history. And, and, and there's an enormous difference between just being goal directed and being God directed. And for people to really, you know, you know, to start to establish or cling closer to the Lord for their God directed in their businesses and careers, that's what I would love to see happen. And we get to eat too. So that's amazing. <laughs> I mean, we get your message and a meal, right, Crystal? <laughs> well, we're doing it virtual. So everybody can have a meal if they think ahead. Do oh, I was thinking we were in person. Yes, but you can absolutely have a meal, but I think you're going to want your hands free to take notes. Um, so I'm hearing you just quote scripture like it's just part of who you are in your fiber. Is, it's, is there something to that, Peter, for people to be able to really store the word of God inside of them? And, and how do you use scripture to, to lift yourself up? Well, um, yeah, uh, you know, I think, you know, I, it's interesting in college, I had this good fortune, I was on the bus one day, and I happened to just sit beside this guy who had the little Bible memory cards, and he told me how he'd memorized 1500 Bible verses. And I thought, That's incredible. Wow. <laughs> and uh, so I decided I would engage in that journey, too. And, you know, the Bible says that God watches over his word to perform it. Mm -hmm. And the more we put the word in our lives, the more he can perform in our lives. And, you know, the Bible says the word is in your heart and in your mouth that you might obey it. It doesn't really say it's in your mind so much. It's got to be in your heart and in your mouth. And, and, and that has transformed my life. I mean, I have been through, you know, some in my mind, some incredible successes and some incredible defeats. You know, I feel like I've fallen off the wagon a few times. And mm -hmm. the thing that's always... Um, got me back up in a lot of ways is scripture memory is just to come back and to know the word and to confess the word. And I, I literally every day, I take time every day to, to, to be reviewing verses that I've memorized and really try and get them in my heart and life. It's, it's, if there's one secret I have found in practical terms, that's been it for me. <laughs> so how many scriptures do you have memorized? Did you... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, well, not a huge number, but a little over <laughs> 1,500. So I did. Oh, not a huge wow. I try to do one a year because I just want to get it right. <laughs> I'm going to have to well, you know, that. Um, I, I, I'll tell you what it really comes down to is, you know, when I was in college, I learned how to skydive. You know, back then you didn't do tandem jumps. You're all there by yourself, you know, out, out there when you jump out of the plane. And, um, and you know, when they taught me how to skydive, I found they could teach me everything I need to know in five or 10 minutes, you know, how to jump out of the plane, how to hold your hands, how to open your parachute, what to do if it doesn't open, it gets all tangled up, how to open your reserve chute and so on. You know, not, it's really not that complicated. However, they didn't take five or 10 minutes to teach me how to skydive. They took six or eight hours to drill for skill over and over and over again, the same few techniques. And here's why, is in times of stress, you revert to habit. And when you jump out of that plane and you open your parachute and it doesn't open or it gets all tangled up, it's probably gonna be a time of stress for you. And at that moment in time, you're gonna revert to habit. And that's why they want to make sure that, you know, all the emergency maneuvers as a habit, that you could wake up at two o'clock in the morning out of a dead sleep and know exactly what to do. 
And I found it's the same thing spiritually. We revert to habit. And if we haven't developed some habits of, of really getting a hold of the word of God, I mean, to know it like your life depended on it. And by that, I'm not saying, oh, gosh, you got to go memorize 1,500 or 2,000 or 3,000 verses. I'm not saying that at all. You know, start with one verse. You know, one verse that you know that you confess over and over again will transform your life. When you've done one, maybe you can do a second one and, and so on. But, you know, so it's not it's, it's really not how much, you know, it's are you growing in this or not? You know, what's your next step? What's your next verse? You're going to really, you know, install into your life. <laughs> Peter, that is, uh, like I said, we could go just all afternoon, but I get, we kind of got to wrap up. But we'd love to get contact information if someone wants to reach out to you before or after the virtual lunch on July the 9th. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, first of all, they can go to uh, peterlow.com uh, and make a connection there or peterlow.org. They're actually two different sites um, and make a connection there. And in fact, actually in September, um, in Tampa Bay, we have what's called the Elevate Summit coming up, uh, which is to really uh, teach people how to walk in this in their businesses and careers, uh, you know, in, in detail. So, you know, John Maxwell is going to be there and some other Christian business leaders who have this kind of experience wow. in their life. They're going to be sharing. Uh, so it's all there. <laughs> uh, can we do a lightning round? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and I want to speak to that Elevate Summit, Ele Elevation Summit or Elevate Summit? Elevate. Elevate, Elevate Summit. Summit. Yes, I was on the website checking it out, and uh, I saw John Maxwell's picture there, and I'm certified John Maxwell trainer, speaker, and All coach. Right. So <laughs> and then I saw Tony Dungy on there as well on your site. And I met him in Kansas City. He wouldn't remember me, but I uh, got my book signed by him. So, and then of course, Peter Lowe, which anybody watching this knows that they have got to come out for the virtual lunch and definitely be there for that summit to learn more because I've, I've got several takeaways just from this short conversation, but we're not done yet. We've got to do the <laughs> lightning round. So just... Bear with me. First thing that comes to mind. Uh, we didn't practice this. He hasn't seen these questions. I can see the beads of sweat coming off. Of the <laughs> oh, I'm so frightened. Yes. <laughs> Suzanne's got the edit button ready to go. She's That's like, right. Okay. All right. So, is there anything in your leadership or business career that you have that you have changed from years past that you have a new mindset on today? Oh, so many things. I'll tell you one interesting thing. Like when I first started out in business, um, I thought I would never sue anyone. Um, you know, that's not the Christian thing to do. And I would tell people, you know, I don't sue. Well, you know what I found? That just kind of set me up as a punching bag, you know, that, you know, you know, people could sue me. They would think I wouldn't sue back. Uh, they could take advantage of me, not honor their terms in the contract. So I changed. Now I tell people, you know what? Someone sued me once. And I fought back and we ended up settling for $3 million, but it was them paying me $3 million instead of me paying them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when people hear that, now they're more reluctant to sue. And I, I just found, you know, um, you know, as a Christian, you actually have to stand your ground. You know, it's, it's, you know that, that's an example of how I've changed, um, you know, something of how I thought was the right way to what I really think is actually the right way to be strong and courageous, the Bible says. Yeah, wow, that's incredible. Uh, is there a recent mistake you have made as a leader that you are willing to share? Oh my goodness, you know, I have made so many mistakes. And, um, you know, if I can, um, I'll, I'll say two things. Um, you know, probably, um, you know, one of the biggest mistakes I made is, you know, the Bible, Jesus said, do not judge or you will be judged. And I always felt I really wasn't judgmental. You know, I mean, you know, like people who would be judgmental of, you know, of, of, of gays and lesbians. I never understood that. I said, you know, you know, you know, what if I went to church and, you know, they told me, you know, to be a Christian, you know, you, you can no longer be heterosexual. You can no longer be strict. I, mean, I wouldn't even know where to start to, to deal with that, you know, and yet we kind of impose that on others. So I was always saying, you know, you, you, you know, you love people as they are. However, what I discovered is I was judgmental of stupidity. 
-hmm. And I'd say, how could that person do that? That was such a stupid thing. I'd never do that. I was judgmental that way. Well, then I went through a divorce. I never expected to get divorced. I mean, I just thought that was for others. I mean, it was a shock to me. But in that, I ended up doing some stupid things, you know, and I suddenly realized, and I paid a big price, you know, my kids paid a big price, you know, uh, you know, all of these things. And, and I suddenly realized, you know what, I reap what I sow. I was judgmental of stupidity and others. And now here I am doing some stupid things. <laughs> I, I appreciate your vulnerability and just being so real and open. Uh, let's see, here we go. Um, what is something surprised that surprised you in this COVID season that you like? Well, um, you know, it's kind of like a slingshot. You pull back to go forward faster and further than ever. And I think this time of having to pull back um, for the people who really seek the Lord in this, it really is a time of empowerment rather than disempowerment. And uh, But we've got to dig deeply into the Lord because, I mean, it's a tough time for a lot of us in our businesses and our lives, you know, but, but you know, it's, it's also the time to get deeper roots. And in that sense, it really has been a good experience, that part of it. <laughs> Pull back. That's incredible. And uh, one more time, the best way people can get in touch with you? Uh, go to peterlow.com. That's Peter, L O W E.com. And uh, it's all there. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for joining us. This was great. This is the Builders Podcast, and we will see you virtually July the 9th at the Relationship Builders Lunch. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Oh, thank you, thank Suzanne you. and Crystal. Thank what a joy to be here with you. Peter, you. you are just, I'm so excited to share you with everybody that logs in. And the great thing about this is you don't be in Central Florida to log in. And that's the blessing of being virtual is you can share it with anybody across the nation. If they have Wi-Fi access, they can get in. Uh, just go to www.cf christianchamber.com and click on the register now button and you'll get a sit at the feet of Peter Lowe and just hear some amazing things that he's going to share with you. Thanks so much for being our guest and, and thank you for saying yes to be. <laughs> thank here. you. My yes. honor and privilege. This has been the Builders Podcast presented by the Central Florida Christian Chamber and produced by Triangle Media. If you're interested in having a program like this for your business, contact Suzanne Lynn at trianglemedia.biz.